Okay. <laughs> Great. Yo guys, welcome to another electric skateboard review video. This one on the new Meepo Mini 5 they just sent me. So that's sitting right here next to my tried and true Meepo Mini 2. Uh, if you guys know, I love electric skateboards if you watch this channel. And Meepo has been my favorite company to date, honestly. I mean, that, that's being genuine. I haven't tried boosted boards. Well, they're not even in business anymore. And some of the higher end stuff, but these have been the most tried and true for me. So I put these side by side because the first thing I notice is that they do look very, very similar with the exception of the new ESC and battery. You can see they use kind of joined together, although they are separate. Now these are both the ER models with the extended range battery and you usually get anywhere like around 15, 16 miles. The advertised range is 11 to 20, but that's gonna really depend on your riding style, weight, and if there's wind or hills and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you can see the old battery did have the percentage display on it. You press that once and I'm showing 93%. You guys probably can't see that. Uh, the new one does not, they, they didn't bring that back yet. There's your charge port. And also, as far as remotes, this is the remote that comes on the Mini 5. So you don't have like the M4S remote, I think is what it's called. You had a digital display with a speedometer and your battery bars and all that. This one doesn't have that. We'll go right back to those, but here's a look at the box that comes in. And keep in mind, this board is not released yet, so things might still change. They might have different retail packaging, I'm not sure. So you got the remote charger, it's a USB-C, which I like. That's definitely an upgrade from the M4S, which was this regular micro USB. The skateboard tool, always bring that with you on your first ride so you can adjust the trucks or tighten down anything needs to be. You get an owner's manual, which I'll flip through this at the end of the video. And that is everything in the box. Back over at the boards, let's take a look. Now the wheels it comes with are 83A in the rear, 90 millimeter, and 78As in the front, also 90 millimeter. Now you'll see on my Mini 2 ER, I opted for the 100 millimeter wheels on this. Uh, I, that's a worthwhile upgrade if you're going over rough terrain, but I honestly do like the way the 90 millimeters ride better. Uh, you see on the ESE, the cooling fins are now on the back instead of on the side. This looks like it would be quite a bit more watertight than the old style, because the old one, if you hit puddles, the water just went right inside of there. The trucks look completely identical. However, they don't say shredder on them anymore. They're just completely blank. This one was in the casting. It says shredder and right here. Uh, the old one came with 100A bushings and these come with 92A bushings. Those can always be swapped out though if, if you want. So far the boards look virtually identical. If you guys remember in a previous video, I did go ahead and add this little kick pad on the back. Uh, since I didn't want the tail getting all scuffed up, I'll probably do that on the new one too. And coming over, this is a little light I added. Same bolt patterns on the deck, same contour, same arrow up front. Everything looks the same up here. Again, with these minis, I don't like how high they pop up when you hit on the tail. And that was one of the reasons I added the, the plastic on the back too that helps out just a little bit with that. And there goes my M4S remote. You can see with the wheels lined up, both the tails kick down without the pad. It sticks up a lot higher and kind of just more than you would like. Uh, of course, this one actually comes up even higher than it. with these wheels. It makes it come up higher with the uh, 90 mil wheels. It's even better. What I'm trying to say is I think the kicktail should be a little bit longer or have a plastic pad option because when you're riding, if you mistakenly kick all the way down, the board slips right out from under you. It's at such an extreme angle, especially if you used to ride in this style of skateboard. I mean, look at the height difference on them. But of course, being lower, this only goes up to yay high and this one towers over it. Let's fire this remote up, see if it's already paired or not. It's flashing and turn the board uh, on. Usually these have push to start. Yep, cool. Let's see if this still has that feature. And the remote's already paired. Wow, look at that. This is board number nine. That's crazy. Let's see if this functions the same. We go forward, brake, okay. Roll a little bit on its own there for a second. And reverse, power button twice should be. Yep, there we go. And brake. You see when I let go of the brake, it goes and rolls on its own for a second. It's odd. I remember my old one doing that. When you're in reverse, this flashes red, and in forward, it flashes green. I like to see that they have an indicator for that. Your speeds are right here. They stay all lit up unless you press it once and it indicates, okay, you're on speed one right now. And then they all light up again. If you want to go to speed two, you just hit that. Here's speed two. Hit it again. Speed three. And speed four. You guys see this? When I let go, it kicks back on for a second. And there's that thing with the brake. Huh. 
I'm gonna try pairing the old M4S remote to this board. I'm curious if it pairs with the ESC. You hold the power button down for seven seconds. You'll hear a beep and now this is flashing. And then you press both the power and function button once. It says pairing and it did not pair. Let's try that on the new one. This is still in pairing mode, hopefully. Press these each once. And there it goes, all right. Well, I do like the old remote better. There's a side-by-side. -side. Let's go for a ride. Yes, the most important thing for me is the range. So let's get this test started. I'm hoping for at least 15 miles. It's gonna be flat ground. I'm 180 pounds, it's around 50 degrees out today. And this is fully charged. I forgot to show you guys the charger that was in the, in the package because I did take it out last night and fully charge it up in the house. This is a 42 volt, three amp charger. I'm gonna start on speed one just to feel the board out. And we'll go from there. All right, well, this is pretty slow on one. I'm full throttle right now. I barely get up this slight hill in my driveway. Out of the box, these trucks are extremely loose for me. I'm definitely gonna have to tighten them down. Otherwise, you'll get wheel bite on a turn. It'll lock the wheel up when it hits the board. You'll fall right off. And right here, we got the GPS app opened. I've started recording our trip. Of course, this doesn't have a speedo or trip on it, so nothing to really compare it to. But uh, sorry about the camera pointing down. I do want to show you these speeds. This is speed one, full acceleration. And I don't see any braking adjustment on this, so we'll have to go back and read the manual later. But five mile an hour, and that was the acceleration. And there's full brake. Now this is speed two, full acceleration. Pretty slow off the line. And again, sorry about the camera angle. I just want you guys to be able to see both of these in action. I have the ground for reference. So 11 mile an hour, full braking right there. Let's go speed three. I'm gonna have to tighten these trucks first. And by the way, anybody who hasn't ridden one of these short boards, uh, this is not even comparable to the ride of a long board. I mean, you're gonna flow a lot nicer through turns and just have a better feeling. But I like these little minis because of the uh, transportability, we'll call it. But they're very compact, and I'm gonna I'm gonna snug these down a bunch, and you're gonna feel like you're you're riding a, a darn uh, I beam cruising this thing around, guys. It's it's very stiff compared to a long board. It's speed three, full acceleration, and top speed. Pretty, pretty good off the line there, that felt nice. These trucks are definitely still a little loose for me, honestly. You can already feel it getting squirrely. Uh, so it's looking like, still creeping a little bit. About uh, 18, 19 mile an hour. And here goes full brake. Yeah, nice solid braking off that. So this definitely increases the braking uh, with, with the speed increase on it. Let's go to speed four now. We go ahead and put some miles down and then we'll go back to top speed. Riding good. Go down this embankment here. Oh yeah. I'm riding on speed four, so we have full braking and the best pickup off the line, but just not quite ready to hit top speed on this thing yet, guys. Need a smoother road. See how she fares over the grass with these wheels. Soft right now. Oh yeah, no problem. Totally off-road capable machine. You go on this gravel path. Of course, we're ruining our range a little bit, but you know, I see she, she goes over this stuff, no problem. Over all this goose poop flinging up at me. <laughs> You know, not designed for this kind of path, but you can see max out on speed four. We're doing 13 miles an hour or 14 mile an hour on this path. And I'm just doing this to kind of push the battery a little bit. I mean, really the biggest downside with this is that your feet will fall asleep after a while. You know, you get the fins and needles. We don't want to mess the range test up too much though. So let's head on back to pavement. Stunt. <laughs> no traffic on the skateboard. Three and a half miles in, flat road. Let's see what you hit on top speed without killing ourselves, without going squirrely is the key. There it is, 20, 25 mile an hour, 26. They do advertise 28. Here goes braking. Look how fast that will come to a complete stop. Uh, they advertise, I think, 28 mile an hour, which you could probably hit. Larger wheels, you can ride over all sorts of junk. 
I mean, look at this stuff. It just soaks it up. At this point, we're 6.3 miles in on the ride and still have two bars. Most standard boards would be totally kicked, and that's why I say you need to go with the ER. Because let's say we set our eyes across the river right now, we want to get to that park. Well, you have to go all the way up to the Trenton Eggs Bridge, cross over, and head. there's probably at least three or four miles. And I'm confident that I think this bike could do that and still have a few miles to bring me back home. So that's what we're going to do. Let's see if we make it. What was that noise? Oh, the wheel just fell off, guys. Holy smokes. Okay. <laughs> Great. I guess we're not gonna make it across the river after all. Yeah, so we were going over rough terrain, but I have beat on all of my electric boards just the same, and I have never had that happen. It seems the aluminum bond in between her, I mean, easily fixable, but the, the bond broke. You gotta get this all the way on for this bearing to slide over the shaft because, you know, otherwise <laughs> the magnets are uh, just pulling against. So I'm not sure how we get that all the way on there. Yeah, <laughs> now it's just coming right back off. Gonna be a long walk home, but I could use a little exercise anyway. Uh, we did make it 7.4 miles. I have no doubt we would have made it to the 15. I'm not gonna lie, I did ride this board over some extremely rough terrain and was very, very aggressive on it. But I've done that to previous e skateboards, including the Mini 2. Never had an issue like this, like a wheel falling off. So <laughs> kind of disappointed, you know? I didn't have to walk too far because this lovely lady came and picked me up with the Gus Man. Bring him for a walk down here. He says, yeah, this smells crazy. It's because it's usually covered in water, boy. Low tide down here on the Delaware. We are back home in the garage. Let's find out exactly what failed on this wheel and why it came off. This part is actually threaded on to the hub sleeve and I guess maybe it didn't have enough Loctite or whatever, but it backed backed out of there. Uh, so easy fix. I just got to put some Loctite, thread this back on, and then, you know, the, there was no bonding in between these two. It's just the screws that hold it. I don't want that to happen again, so I'm going to dab it up with some red Loctite and then thread it back on. You can probably never get it off now, but hey, I'd rather that than have this thing come off at high speed. And it is standard threads. The threads seem to still be in good shape. So at this point, to be able to snug it down further, well, I could, yeah, I'm gonna bolt this back on and then hold the inside and torque it down. Let's see, the board sits like this going forward, so it's the back right wheel. And when there's resistance on this, the motor goes to spin forward, that would cause it to loosen. So it, it loosened on acceleration. Uh, not on braking versus uh, on the braking would actually tighten it up. I'm gonna go put this strap wrench on the wheel and crank her down as hard as I can and let that Loctite dry. Not really worried about scratching it up or anything. Crank her down, good. Okay. Oh, that actually seemed like it tightened it a scooch. Several attempts later, I could not get this wheel off. I'm just gouging it all up. A lot of torque on it, so whatever 
Loctite is in there is much much better than what was on this side heck is that coming off you know that could have hurt me if i was going a lot faster uh, by the way i said these weren't shredder name brand i do see shredder up here on the front now so definitely a different style than the old shredder trucks which i was doing a little research and it seems that's an in-house brand for them anyway but the rears are completely blank they don't say shredder on them anywhere uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and close this initial review video out obviously it's not gonna be too positive as you might imagine uh because the wheel came off but i really if i was to tell you which of these two boards to go get i don't think you can even get the mini 2er anymore but i would have to tell you that one i like the battery percentage on here i like the remote better i also like that this has a usb out for charging your phone on it uh the, the v4 or this new mini 5 they don't have that as far as wheel design these are different than what's on the old mini 2 these say sz and you see the style on them compared so completely different there's a big chunk i took out on that one but i've ripped and shredded this board really hard never had a wheel come off so i, I definitely trust those more than these at this point there will probably be a follow-up video on this i don't think they're going to be too happy with my review i suppose my final closing statement would have to be that it's just like the tried and true mini 2 but not as good hopefully you found it helpful drop a comment if you have any feedback or any info on these wheels and uh, hopefully I'll see you in a future video or the follow-up on this one. Maybe they'll make some changes. Who knows? All right, guys. No nonsense, no how. Over out. And like usual at the end of these videos, I always try to put the manual one. This is for the Meepo V5 and Mini 5. Just flip through this. If you guys want to pause it, you can to be able to read. Ooh, stick the pages. All right, here we go. Boom, boom. Get you an image of each one. that new remote not a big fan and then just no oh, all right some warnings warranty info that's it meepoboard.com drop a link to them down below if you want to check them out